open for um, comments and questions, and we have a 20-25 minute window. Uh, we'll start with Sean Crispin. Uh, Sean Crispin, Southeast Asia editor with Asia Times Online. Uh, a very simple question, but I think many of the analysts, diplomats, and others in the room that are putting together their own projections for political and economic matters this year are asking, um, how will uh, the various panelists' um, projections and predictions for this year, both on the political and economic front, change if this is the year we face the royal transition, that is, that we face the royal succession? How does that potentially put a spanner in the works of, of, the, of the various projections um, that the panel has to put forward here this morning? Okay, any other questions or comments related to um, royal succession, the timing of it? Probably not. <laughs> so anyone on the panel? Ajahn Joan Hepba and then from Korn perhaps. What happens if you have a royal succession this year? I mean, it's one thing that could happen any time. Could be long time, could be short time. Uh, up to up, up to the present, Thailand never play major role in international community. Thousand years until now, uh, uh, we we just have only one or two Thai who 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 who, who, who were. Uh, who were to send the director of the WTO. Uh, secondly, uh, Thai diplomatic tradition is on way inert, inactive, until now, inactive until now. So what the uh, Kovi uh, suggest or propose or want to see, I think, wait until 100 years, 100 years. Thailand will never play any major role in international relation, international community. Never, never. Whoever be become prime minister, whoever uh, become the minister of foreign affairs, will not play major role. This is my belief, my belief. You know, even in the NGO cycle, we, we don't have any the NGO, Thai NGO, who, who are leader of the regional NGO or world NGO. So, so the, I, 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 I answer the, the question, but concerning uh, Rohingya, uh, while I was a National Human Rights Commissioner, I, I contact with them, I help them a lot. And, and this time, I propose to, to the Prime Minister that we should, we should, we should, uh, uh, I allow them to stay for a while and sit in a camp, temporary camp, because, because now Muslim, Muslim organization or Muslim community in Thailand pay, pay attention and, and you know, Jula Ramadri cry. And they and they they invite or they ask the Muslim people to to keep to keep keep food keep clothes. So if we if if Thai government try to push them out, it's not good. It's not good. So should should allow them to stay for a while for a while. And and because Malaysian government Malaysia had already welcomed them, I think, 30,000 small Rohingya. So Malaysian government do not want, want Rohingya anymore. But now they, but now Rohingya, they, they, 
they come to Thailand to the south because uh, because almost all of them have have husbands husband or father in Malaysia so they want to go there they want to go there so it 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 take time to talk to negotiate with the Malaysian government and uh, the the thoughts uh, concerning the deep south crisis huh? I I always I always say since the beginning that this time if we do not do not allow them to to have autonomy or to have to have independent autonomy they will they they will continue to fight to the second year, third year and now nine year already. And and I always say that even every god god on all over the world come to the south, the deep cyclist will not decline if we don't allow them to rule themselves to keep autonomy. So for me, talk with them, negotiate with them uh, during the previous government, Kunapisit, send one of my friends to talk with them several times, like Dr. Paisak, Paisak Chunawan. Even, even the, mid, the military dictator, dictatorship government, Ponek, uh, General Suryut, he went to talk with the lead, with one of the leader of the of the Muslim movement in Bahrain, in Bahrain, and and he must he must say apology. This is this it was one of the condition to meet to meet the leader of the of the the Muslim movement. So General Suryut so, so as the prime minister declare apology just, just to go to see them to talk with them but nothing happened last year dr taksin went to miss them in kn nothing happened so we must continue to to approach to negotiate with them. If not, the deep south passage will stay forever. Even God cannot him cannot him. Thank you, Achan. Uh, would you have anything to say about what happens if the royal succession takes place over the course of this year? No, not much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from uh, to answer Sean's question from an economic perspective, you know, um, I, I guess the, the, the mood of the people um, will, will not be conducive towards, you know, extravagant uh, activities or economic activities, and, and th that might be an impact, therefore, from, from that perspective, um, but I fully expect that life goes on. Yes, and uh, Ajantaran made a point earlier about uh, the kind of parameters that have been set in Thailand. So it seems to me as an observation, the longer we're in this patch, the longer this interim uh, end game, uh, the less, perhaps the less risky or the less worrisome this, this issue becomes. So we have a kind of a learning curve that is uh, uh, set in place. Uh, it will not... Uh, you know, we've thought about this many, many times, so we hope it will be a very long time, but I think it's not a, an abrupt and sudden and unexpected uh, event if it were to happen. Any other question, comment? Uh, okay, we'll take one from the Malaysian diplomat, please. Uh, thank you, um, Achan Titinan. Uh, my name is Nozudi from the Embassy of Malaysia. I think you coaxed uh, Kun Kavi to talk a little bit about Malaysia, where the busy situation in the South Pole. Southern Thailand. Um, if I may ask Kun uh, uh, to oblige to talk about a little bit about the government's policy pertaining to this issue. Thank you. 
ask the wrong person. I mean, uh, you should ask Dr. Charans to answer the uh, situation in the South. I think uh, Thailand made a big mistake trying to solve the Southern problems uh, under the leadership of Thaksin, who has the tendency to do his own way, Thaksin style, I mean, not the Gangnam style. I think that's why it's caused all the obstacle. That much I can say. And I think uh, uh, Malaysia role is very, very important. The fact that uh, the current government has open arms uh, trying to offer help is a very good step. But I think uh, much more tangible cooperation long term along the border, uh, among the military, the intelligence, and the dual citizenship are equally important. I think if that uh, has been in place and strengthened, uh, that will help tremendously. And I don't think it would last uh, a thousand years or need that kind of guards, you know. It needs practical ideas which are already there and political view, political view. This government has political view for the wrong reason. And that is the saddest part. I mean, a lot of things has been going on and done well, you know, like the Thai, bim, 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 but for the wrong reason. So that's all I can say. I mean, you know, uh, it's a, another missed opportunity. It will take time. Thank you. Malaysia is, I think, indispensable for our uh, handling of, of the South. Uh, and we have a precedent an example in, in the 1980s, the last uh, insurgency, the communist insurgency, and a generation earlier, once we had Thai Malaysian uh, cooperation wiped out both of them. Any other question, comment? Uh, I think we have the, the, someone there, and then uh, please you, the gentleman in the, in the suit, and then, and then Marwan. Mm -hmm. Nicholas Henley from Talent Technologies. Ajahn I'm sorry, um, where are you from? The Talent Technologies. Ajahn Jalanka, uh, early on in your presentation you talked about Thai society being divided. Um, uh, if you were to draw a line between Ganjanaburi in the, in the west and Pattaya in the east and added up all the GDP south of that, I think by my calculations it's about 70% and, and obviously 30% north approximately, though I'm sure the panel will be able to pick, pick me up on any inaccuracies. Um, there's a saying in the Bible that everyone wants to drink the wine, but no one wants to press the grapes. And, and with your government, I see lots of policies about drinking wine that they were alluded to. Um, rice pledging scheme, um, tablets, etc., aimed at the, the group to the north, north. But I very rarely hear anything about a plan that will, will tell us how are you in the long term going to get this, this, this area that mainly your heartland. I think it's 80% would vote for Pertai or whatever manifestation of that group in the north, and obviously 80% vote south uh, would vote in that line, south of the line would vote for Democrats. What is the plan to get these people in the north to be able to contribute more and, and, and really, if you like, press the wine more rather than always expecting handouts to drink the wine, uh, to press the grapes more? So, do, is there actually a plan for? Uh, getting the, you know, that group to contribute more economically. So your question is uh, to have more responsibility from the electorate? Right, so you'll, you see Thai, Thai society is divided with, a, with the, most people voting for Democrats south of the line and that's where most of the GDP comes from and most uh, voting broadly speaking for, for Thai north of the line and uh, it seems that the expectation north of the line, which is the majority of the society, seems to be always to get handouts. And I just wonder, you know, is there a plan, is there a long-term plan to get this, this area? Instead of always having to fight poverty and expect handouts, is there a plan to get them to contribute uh, more economically so they don't have to depend on, on these handouts? Okay, well, the, the components of output and productivity may be a bit misplaced in your, uh, in your question, but I think the main point is, you know, what do you do with people who vote for Pertai, uh, and they should not be expecting just freebies. What, 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 do, you, what do we do? Uh, 
in other words, again, sorry, the, the, you know, this is a perception I think is valid that populist intoxication, giving them a lot of these policies, um, but can, how can we get them to actually become more responsible? What do we do? In the economic terms, uh, I uh, I think that uh, Thai private sector play major role in economic development during the last 40 years. And secondly, we have the great the great Isan people. We have the great Isan people who 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 can do everything economically. Who who boost the over economic growth or system. But what uh, uh, the water, uh, the the Isan people and the Northern people, they vote for pro Thai party uh, because because they still love and believe Thaksin and because they they yeah, they got benefit uh, during Thaksin government. I always say that I always say that uh, it's, it's what the first time uh, that Thai people, especially poor people in the sun and not in the north, know the meaning of politics. Before, before only intellectual academician or, or Bangkokian middle class will know, will know what, what is politics. But but during Thaksin regime, Thaksin government, uh, they learn more and more the meaning of politics. That's why they they vote. They vote for for uh, people power party. They vote for Thai party. And and if there, I mean, if there is a resolution uh, dissolution of the of the parliament. They will vote per Thai again and again and again. Even even the government, uh, I mean this government, uh, could not uh, could not uh, certify them independently. But they will vote. They will vote for. But uh, during the last uh, eighteen months. Government, government policy, public policy, uh, both in, both in, both in town, in Bangkok, or, or in in Isan, in the north, uh, 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 keep keep people, keep water, or uh, keep people uh, a home, a home, a home that. That uh, if this government uh, can survive until the end of the term, they will be they will be better. They will be, be better uh, more and more. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think we'll t this will be the last round uh, because I'm conscious of uh, time, and I think some of our guests would like to attend the uh, the EU conference on freedom of expression. Uh, so Marwan first, and then uh, uh, the gentleman there, and then uh, Dr. Abishai. Yeah, uh, Marwan Markham Markham Enterprise Service. Uh, it's a, quest, a two part question, and Thaksin is a common thread. Uh, Kun Khan, uh, you, you basically said, and I think even Jaran Ajahn, Jaran said there was political peace last year, and one of the reasons was the government had common sense to uh, soft, to not push the constitutional amendment issue, uh, which you said was going to benefit Thaksin. So, would you, I mean, at the end of the day, if you look at the political problems that have undermined Thailand, they're always centered around emotive issues. 
And do you think the constitutional issue was the central emotive issue that could have exploded had the government pushed ahead with it? Uh, that is my question to you and even Ajahn Charan. And to Kun Kavi, uh, also a taxi related question. Uh, you talked about Dawoi. Uh, could you explain to me why this government, and clearly Taksin, is so dependent or bending backwards to appease Ital Thai? That's a Dawoi related question. Okay, we'll take the, the other two comments or questions now. Uh, gentlemen, please. Yeah, Jamie Woodward, UBS Investment Bank. Um, just very simple, really. This um, reconciliation that we're meant to be seeing between the two parties, uh, red and yellow, doesn't seem to be going very well. Is there any chance we could see any reconciliation on the horizon? Yeah, Abhichai, Independent Development Consultant. Uh, maybe this is towards Kavi, but any other panelists are welcome to uh, add their comments. Uh, I mean, this I'm looking beyond, eh, beyond the borders, but because we are part of ASEAN. Uh, three ASEAN countries are going into elections the next year and a half. Cambodia, Malaysia, and uh, I think Cambodia and Malaysia this year, and then Indonesia next year. So how would the landscape change if there are changes in you know, the political leadership there? So three, a few questions uh, on the Taksin in a way, the Ito Thai connection, whether uh, this is something fishy. And then the, also Marwan asked about uh, uh, ta the chart to change the constitutional amendments. Had it been pushed through, would it been a, a real crisis? And uh, if it were to be pushed through this year, pressed again, uh, should we expect a, a, a crisis and confrontation? Uh, and then, uh, of course, elections in ASEAN, uh, uh, would it affect the ASEAN, how would it affect ASEAN uh, cohesion? Reconciliation, anyone can uh, address that on a panel? Why don't we have uh, a reconciled society? So, Ajahn, first. Uh, Kun Kwan, would you like to come first? Yeah, I can. Um, first of all, just a quick comment on some, some of the things that uh, my fellow panelists have, uh, have said. Um, particularly, the comment related to um, the assertion that Thailand will, will never um, have an important role to play in international diplomacy. Um, it's a personal view, I understand, of uh, Mr. Jiran, but I think he's also the advisor to the Thai foreign minister, so that's not helpful. Um, I, I do think that, although that might have been the case for the previous thousand years, um, if we are to uh, participate um, in what is going to be an increasingly important um, economic region in the world, um, <clears throat> we should not and probably cannot avoid um, needing to be more uh, involved, if not necessarily assertive, um, in international diplomacy. Um, I look back to our first year government. Uh, we, along with every other nation in the world, were faced with um, a global financial and economic crisis. Um, there was going to be a very important uh, G20 meeting um, which would discuss the way forward for uh, all the economies um, and it was going to be held in London. Um, Kunavisit had a plan um, in attending Davos just before that to see how he might be able to uh, get a seat for Thailand. Um, at that G20 meeting, which was going to be chaired by Britain, Gordon Brown as Prime Minister. They did meet in Davos, and I wasn't there myself, so I wasn't sure what Gunnar Visit said to Gordon Brown, but he got us an invitation. Um, we didn't deserve it from an economic perspective. We were nowhere ranked in the top 20 of the world. Um, he then helped Gordon Brown devise an explanation as to why Thailand was invited by Britain and many other bigger countries were not. Um, and the explanation was Thailand that year was chair of ASEAN. Um, and that ASEAN um, together combined had a GDP equivalent to uh, the fifth uh, biggest country in the world um, and therefore deserve a seat at least an as an observer um, at the G20 meeting. Ever since then, 
ASEAN has held on to that seat. Um, now G20s have become uh, somewhat less relevant than they were only three years ago, perhaps. But that's not to say necessarily that that would be true in the future when some other crisis erupts that um, and, and the decision of the major economic powers uh, could have significant implication on our own country, Thailand. We are a very open economy. Um, anything that happens to the world affects us, and that has been proven to have been the case uh, just three years ago. So I think playing our role is important. Um, ASEAN is increasingly going to be important, um, and we need to have a more uh, concerted voice, um, which is still lacking, not just within ASEAN, but in Asia as a whole. Um, why is the IMF still run by Europeans? Why is the World Bank still run by Americans? Why don't we have a concerted effort to support the WTO candidate from Indonesia? Um, Asia doesn't have a voice, and I think um, it is not being represented, therefore, uh, according to uh, its economic status, and, and in my opinion, that, that should change. Anyway, um, we're not in government, we have to wait. Uh, reconciliation um, between parties, you said. Um, the problem, uh, Jamie, is that the yellow shirts are not represented by a political party. Um, so uh, there can be no reconciliation between, well, they were, but they didn't win any votes. Um, and so there is no yellow party uh, to reconcile with the red shirts. But if you read in your mind, you meant the Democrats. Uh, I'd like to make a point that there is a distinction and a clear distinction. Actually, the yellow shirts, the yellow shirts don't like us. Um, so from <clears throat> that perspective, if you may ask that question from the perspective of uh, uh, Democrat and Pue Thai uh, reconciliation, there need not be reconciliation. There just needs to be respect. Um, in, in, in a democracy, uh, you, know, you, you wouldn't be asking for the Democrat Party and the Republicans to reconcile, or, or they wouldn't necessarily know what you mean exactly um, by asking for reconciliation. Um, we, as I pointed out earlier, are perfectly happy to support them when they propose um, good laws and good legal amendments. We've do been doing that consistently. Um, <clears throat> the Red Church did not respect us in that same way while we were in government. Um, there was every, uh, at every opportunity, they, they tried to um, uh, distract and, and disrupt government um, and, and to try to uh, basically uh, take away our um, focus and ability to, to rule. Um, we don't do that. Um, we haven't been doing that for the past year and a half, and I think that's reconciliation enough um, from, from us. I am intrigued by uh, Kuntaran's uh, very first comment. I wrote it down when he said that the UDD or Red Shirts uh, um, are not pro taxing um, it, it hasn't, everything else he, he said subsequent to that uh, was inconsistent with that initial statement. Um, nevertheless, uh, I will repeat that the, the only potentially uh, destabilizing factor, um, in, in my perspective, for this government um, is if they attempt to override the judicial uh, arm um, and try to um, help uh, Thaksin um, in, in, in that manner, using uh, the majority that they have. Um, other than that, uh, I think we have to grin and bear it and, um, and look forward for uh, future opportunities where changes may be possible through the electoral process. Okay, thank you. Let me go down this way. Um, Kun Kui, would you like to have a response to... Well, I really don't know the answer, but I think to save the Tawai DC project, which required a lot of uh, funding, that's the only way to turn it G to G. And in fact, I think it was a miscalculation because the, the Japanese, supposed to be the biggest source of uh, investment, has not yet made any commitment. And I think the commitment will not come in a long time, given the current tension between China and Japan and Thailand position and close relation with China, that would be my answer. Uh, a a Pichai uh, question is very interesting. I think uh, 
political landscape within ASEAN has changed considerably. Uh, maybe a lot of people didn't realize it or see it tangibly because the, the change in ASEAN has never been so dramatic uh, before. In 1998, it was the transformation of Indonesia, the biggest country of ASEAN, and the democratization has been going on very well. From the lowest denominator, Indonesia has become the largest denominator, pushed through all these uh, ASEAN Charter, uh, political uh, security and cooperation, that's what we have now. Indonesia want to see ASEAN in the global stage, join the communities and all that. And now it's Myanmar turns. Certainly uh, the jury is still out whether Myanmar, when it comes um, next year, the chair, what Myanmar and uh, Tatmadaw and the parliament hotel will have in mind. But uh, having close dialogue with some of the leader, I think, I just think that uh, Myanmar will dazzle ASEAN with its political and economic reforms. Here is the reason. For years, since 1997, Myanmar has been condemned as a black sheep of ASEAN. Now, it seems to me that Myanmar leaders have the confidence that it's a time that we can show ASEAN some of the positive developments. Uh, Sai Muk Khan, the vice president of uh, he, he's a Chan uh, of Myanmar, told me in a dinner table, said that, you know, political reform is good for economic reform. And for me, that was a very bold statement. In fact, two months ago, uh, federations of Myanmar tourists have visited Laos to exchange views and ideas or plan to promote tourism. And one of the biggest ideas the Myanmar delegation gave to Laos is that open up politics is good for tourism. So this kind of change is moving, but you won't detect it until some of the country, for example, uh, this year Brunei uh, will not uh, stir up anything, just want to maintain status quo make sure that you know, uh, ASEAN uh, will maintain centralities, come up with a good statement that will not upset China or show bias. I think to be able to do that, that would be good enough. But for Myanmar, a lot of things in store because Myanmar futures in ASEAN will be tested. And now almost every single day, in Nepidor, there are seminar after seminar of how ASEAN is working, key issue, protocols, and procedures. So they are taking it seriously. And mind you, Myanmar is not like the three other uh, new member, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, they were former communist country. Myanmar has uh, still with democracy in 1948 to 1952 and some of the residues still very very strong and you can feel that and they use English so they no need uh, to uh, have that barrier so if Myanmar did it right like Indonesia for the past 14-15 years that suddenly turned uh, its road over Burma could be the game changer of course um, I look pretty optimistic saying this, but there are many other obstacles. That explains why Myanmar choose political reform so dramatically at the same time with take economic reform. Because the leader realized that slow or fast reform have the same cost, at least for now. So Myanmar choose the quick dramatic, particularly in the area that ASEAN find one thing, particularly, for example, media and certain democratization. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll have the last word from Ajahn Ajahn Taran. Uh, red and yellow uh, will not, will not uh, reconcile it. 
will not will, will not because uh, 90 90 percent of race uh, don't agree with the national reconciliation 90 percent of the yellow don't agree also the yellow don't agree the national reconciliation because they they do not want Thaksin come back and the red uh, the red don't agree because the red want to bring a piece of and so tape or general to, to the court so if if there is a national reconciliation uh, uh, former prime minister uh, will be I mean, will be free, and the yellows also are afraid of toxin. So they on way yeah, like a Democrats party leader could not visit. On way, on way say for toxin, for toxin, for toxin, for toxin every day. Eat the three three times three times every day, four taxin, four taxin, four taxin. It's not true. It's not correct. It's not correct. Taxin is not the, is not the sole person who, who creates trouble or different to Thai, to Thailand. And also the red, the red before it was General Prem, who who what who what the cause of everything, and the yellow it what toxin. So both the red the red and the yellow uh, had uh, what uh, what uh, in philosophy called monoism. Monoism. We believe that there is only one thing dominate everything. It's not correct. It's not true. Taxin is not general baby not all. Oh, no one in the in this country can dominate everything. So if both if the red and the yellow still believe of stinting stinting in term of monoism, the national reconciliation will not will not be success, never success. So both sides should change, change belief, change the change the idea, change the mind, and come to come to the reality. Then the national reconciliation. I I, I I am one of the few who advocate national reconciliation for three years already for three years because no one know the end. No one know the end. No one in this country know the end between uh, the crisis between the red and yellow because because the crisis uh, the red and yellow national wide and deep to the family almost every family uh, husband red boom, uh, wife yellow parent yellow and children red in my family my brother yellow i am red almost and never happened in thai never happened in thai history never happened in thai history that the conflict between yellow and red prevent everywhere and deeply to you know in in the cop in the company of, of in the of, in the office huh? uh don't move uh don't move work uh, like a fifth four six four 70% are yellow. Those who work from 5th floor, 4th floor, 3rd floor, 70% are red everywhere. And Kunanan Panayachun asked one of my friends that how big, how big the, the red moment. And, and I, 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 I told him that if you met Kunanan uh, Panayachun, you ask him that how many, how many you are domestic, domestic worker. If he said, uh, if he answer three, two of them, all, all of them are 
yellow. Or are uh, red and you are yellow. Everywhere, like this, everywhere. So, national reconciliation will not be success. Will not succeed. At least in this, in this uh, five year, in this five year, no national reconciliation. I assure, I confirm. <laughs> May I? Thank you. Um, I think it's rather depressing uh, hearing all of that. Um, although I do admit, for some reason it's true, uh, it's usually the parents who are yellow and the children are red. It's usually the wife who's yellow and the husband is red. I don't know why, but that's the case. Um, but um, in any case, uh, I think when we talk about reconciliation, most of us who are neither yet or yellow, and, and I have to say I'm one of those, um, we define reconciliation as being when there is no more yet red and yellow, not when red and yellow see eye to eye. When there is no more red and no more yellow, just like, you know, six years ago. Um, that, I think, is the true re definition of reconciliation for, for a lot of times. And one of the problems that that is the case, if I may, is that um, I don't think either side defines sufficiently clearly what it is they want. I mean, what do the reds want? What do the yellows want, other than to defeat the other? Um, you talk about monoism, and you talk about uh, toxin not being the B-O and N-O to all that is red. But actually, you have to admit that you don't communicate that very well as a movement, because it's almost impossible to distinguish toxin's interest from red's interest, from Bertai's interest everybody effectively is sitting on the same side of the boat. Um, and I'm very sympathetic with, with any uh, idealistic uh, or ideological um, goals that either side might have. But perhaps over time, they'll become more clearly defined and distinct from the interests of Bletai as a government and distinct from interests of Thaksin as a person. And, and once that takes place, I think we can move towards uh, acceptance and reconciliation. But if it's all banded together, um, I think I agree with you, it is very difficult. Well, Chan Chuan, you said five years, right? So at least beyond five years, it's still possible. Um, so I think it's fitting that we've come back to this, uh, the, the color-coded divide between the red and yellow. Um, on the other hand, there's now space that we didn't have before for some movement, for Thailand to do, to make some, some forward movements. Uh, this year, this, this year, I think uh, uh, perhaps we will have some crisis with the Cambodian border, but uh, not as bad, perhaps, as 2008, 9, 10, and 11. Uh, on that note, I want to bring this uh, forum to a close. Thank you very much for coming, and I want you to join me, please, uh, in thanking our speakers, our distinguished speakers. Thank you very much. Our next event uh, will probably be next month on the uh, the Pubi here crisis.